Hello, so the second stage of this process of ideological subversion involves a process of destabilization. The bankers have affected this period of destabilization uh, over a, a period of a little bit longer than a decade from the late 1990s up until 2007 when they ushered in the global financial crisis. So uh, in 1998 they actually uh, experienced a um, direct opposition to their plan of destabilization from former CFTC Commissioner Brooksley Bourne who desired to issue a dire warning against the continued unregulated proliferation of financial derivatives, which she said would eventually lead to financial crisis in America and around the world. Now, back then, uh, basically, her desire to issue this warning uh, was crushed by uh, former um, Fed Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, um, former Secretary of Treasury uh, Robert Rubin, uh, next Goldman Sachs employee, executive, and future Citigroup executive, um, Lauren Summers, who's a Harvard professor and now current member of Barack Obama's uh, National Economic Council, and former SEC chairman Arthur Levitt. So they basically railroaded Brooksley Bourne right out of her job, forced her to resign, and uh, crushed uh, basically the one rational voice of reason. Uh, during that time period. So just a year later, um, having successfully warded off uh, that opposition, uh, Alan Greenspan, along with help from Citigroup CEO Sandy Wow, was able to repeal uh, the last piece of legislation that really protected consumers, and that was the Glass-Steagall Act. So once they were able to destroy uh, all of the regulations that protected the consumer, uh, they were able to usher in this period of uh, masses destabilization over the next 10 years. Okay, so the third stage of this process of ideological subversion involves the creation of a crisis. Uh, so a lot of people say, well, why would anyone want to create a process of crisis? Um, the answer is threefold. During a period of crisis, uh, one can affect change in a, in a rapid manner which would be impossible during normal times because during crisis, of course, fear and desperation are at higher levels, so thus it's, it's easier to um, sell people on the concept of change because everyone will say, well, anything's better than this, so if you propose change, uh, even though uh, the change can be bad change instead of good change, it's, it's still a lot easier to affect change. So what the bankers want to accomplish during a period of crisis is uh, primarily there are three things. One is a concentration of their power. So they want to consolidate their power even further. Um, two would be to de destabilize economies even more because destabilization of economies, again, intensifies a crisis, leads for Christ to help, for help, and then allows them to consolidate their power. And three, just to increase totalitarian measures through increasing the uh, big brother government. So those are the three things that uh, bankers wish to accomplish through crisis. So we saw that this current period of crisis started in 2007 with the collapse of the subprime market and it's still ongoing right now. Um, interestingly enough, bankers also will twist the concept of uh, crisis by saying, oh, this crisis was created because um, we didn't have others. Uh, there was uh, too much uh, of a free market, which is a ridiculous notion if you really understand what free markets are. And they say, oh, in this case we need uh, more regulation. So uh, the, what people don't realize is the fact that free markets do not mean zero regulation. So this is what the bankers are trying to sell you on. Oh, the markets were too free, so this is why we had all these problems. It wasn't too free. What you had was too much fraud. So sure, the fraud needs to be regulated and the fraud needs to be cut out and, and then you could have a healthy economy. Uh, but instead, they try to sell you, especially Alan Greenspan, on this ridiculous notion that there were free markets created this problem. And in fact, it wasn't free markets, but it was distortion of um, free market prices that created this problem. It was the uh, central bank control and manipulation of free markets that created this problem, not the existence of free markets. So under this guise of selling you free uh, false concepts, which goes back you know, to the re-education process again, um, that, that where they re-educate hundreds of millions, if not billions of people into their lies and propaganda, so people can't understand exactly what's going on and accept any change that they're given, even 
change that affects negatively affects their welfare. So bankers come and they'll come to the public with promises of all this change. Oh, we're going to pass all this new financial regulation. But what people don't realize is this regulation is actually only designed to give them more power. So this is why the period of crisis is created. So that brings us to the fourth stage of ideological subversion.